Hi, I'm Dan Galpin, and we're introducing Frame Profiling, a new tool within the Android GPU Inspector today on The Game Show. The Android GPU Inspector, or AGI, is a graphics profiling tool that allows you to see what's going on inside of the GPU of your Android device, so you can better understand graphics bottlenecks and optimize the performance of your 3D game or app. We've supported system profile functionality since the launch of AGI. It shows a timeline of events such as CPU activity, memory usage, and per-process information alongside high-frequency GPU hardware counters, and if you're using Vulkan, GPU activity information. It gives you a high-level look at what's happening inside of each frame based upon the counters that your GPU supports. Frame profiling uses that system profile data to help you inspect a single frame. You can see the time required for each render pass and examine what commands, geometry, shaders, and textures are associated with it. To get started with Android GPU Inspector, head on over to developer.android.com to download the tool and check to see if your development machine and device are supported. AGI depends on having the Android Debug Bridge, or ADB, installed. If you've done any Android development on your machine, you likely have it already, otherwise you can get it from the SDK Manager within Android Studio, or you can download the standalone package. Once AGI has validated your device, you can select from a list of installed applications that can be profiled, typically debug versions, and then for the type of trace, you can select either Vulkan or OpenGL on Angle, depending on which API your app or game is using. You can start tracing at the beginning, at a specific time or frame, or select a manual capture start like I'm doing. All frame profiling captures are for a single frame. And then we have AGI launch our app or game and capture the frame data so we can begin our analysis. In the profile view, you can see much of the same data that we get from AGI System Profiler. You can see the frame buffer size being rendered into, the time it took to render, and on this device, you can see the time spent during binning and even the time spent on individual render slices. The information in this view will vary depending on the GPU family being profiled. Clicking on one of the render pass blocks within the timeline highlights the associated commands within the commands window. Within the render pass, you can look at individual draw calls, look at the state, and examine structures or memory regions. Defining debug markers within your code allows you to group calls under a heading in the command tree, and popular game engines do lots of this automatically. Select a draw call or a group containing a draw call, and you can see what the current frame buffer state is. The pipeline tab gives you insight into some key details of what is happening at each stage of the render pipeline for that call. Unused stages will be grayed out. In the input assembler stage, you can examine the vertex bindings and attributes, as well as the topology of your vertex primitives. And this allows you to answer questions about vertex formats and see whether your vertex data is optimally compressed and laid out. All of the programmable shader stages, vertex shader, tessellation control and evaluation, geometry shader, and fragment shader, allow you to see the shader associated with the stage, the descriptor sets bound to it, and give you a static analysis of the shader complexity. You can either view the disassembled Sphere V or a decompiled version created using Sphere V Cross. The rasterization pipeline stage allows you to take a look at parameters from the rasterization state, the multi-sample state, and the viewports and scissors that describes where and what gets rendered to the output frame buffer. Finally, the blend stage allows you to see the parameters for each color blend attachment state, the overall blend state, and the depth and stents of states. In addition, you can look at the overall driver state after the execution of the selected command within the state tab. The performance tab allows you to get estimates of various aspects of GPU performance for each render pass. These will vary depending on the GPU you're working with, but mine includes texture and vertex memory read bandwidth, the percentage of nearest linear and anisotropic filtering, the percentage of time shading fragments and vertices, and much more. You can filter from the list of GPU counters. You'll also be able to run experiments here to determine performance impacts quickly, such as the result of disabling anisotropic filtering. This just scratches the surface of what AGI can do. You can see a list of your textures with their associated metadata. You can easily find your largest textures. You can view the geometry associated with each call and take a look at the complexity in terms of vertices, indices, and triangles. You can get a report of any errors returned by the API and get a list of all the shaders used along with your disassembled and decompiled output and bindings. So that's the Android Graphics Inspector with Frame Profiling. Let us know what you think and what more we could do to give you the insights you need to solve performance problems. As always, thanks for your support in continuing to build incredible games. I'm Dan Galpin for The Game Show. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, and stay safe.